So we carry on with our explanation for chapter uh, three, uh, railway traction systems. And we have reached section six. We will we'll talk about uh, uh, power conversions in railway applications or uh, traction package control. So how the power is being transferred from uh, how the direct current is transferred to a DC current and how it's being utilized within the train is what we'll be discussing in this section. So without further ado, let's start. And this is what we'll be discussing, power conversion in railway applications, choppers, inverters, and converters. And converters is uh, just a general word. It can be a transformer, it can be inverter, it can be chopper, it can be rectifier. Just to give you an example, what's a chopper, what's an inverter, what's a, a converter? So here, we uh, this is a train, and this train has, uh, ha has a pantograph and has a transformer and has a rectifier. And what happens is that the current, the AC current is coming from the uh, overhead line going through the, the lines connecting to the transformer first, then going to the rectifier second, then going to the induct inverter third, to the induction uh, motors or to the traction motors. So how does this process happen? How the energy is converted from 25 AC to, uh, to 450 voltage AC or three phase 415 voltage AC. So let's start from the beginning. You have a train, you, might, you have a primary power source. Either it's your diesel engine or it's your DC electrified infrastructure or your AC electrified infrastructure. And you have your motors and your motors are limited. Either they are induction motors like most of the trains application AC. They require a variable voltage, variable frequency, three phase supply or they are DC motors that require, variable, that require variable DC voltage. To achieve this, you need to use traction packages and those traction packages will transfer your uh, alternative current to direct current, your direct current to direct current, your direct current to alternative current or your direct current to, uh, or, or AC to AC. I think what's missing here, AC to AC because you need a, a conversion of high voltage to uh, lower voltage uh, AC. So how this happens and how the, uh, the power is moved from your primary source to your motors through the traction package. So power rail application sources, let's have a look at this picture. This is a pantograph that is feeding the train with 25, 000, 25 kV AC. This goes to uh, following the yellow line to the transformer, to the transformer, then from that transformer, part of it goes to axle brush, but the one that is uh, utilized within the train go to a rectifier, and the rectifier change, the transformer change from AC to different voltage AC. The rectifier utilize the AC and transfer it to DC through a DC link or what is known to be a chubber then the DC is, uh, is attached to an inverter and the inverter transfer the DC to AC or three phase power supply. So the inverter and the induction motors work together uh, uh, continuously. The DC to AC inverter, we talked about the rectifier, that's the rectifier, which it transferred uh, bantograph bus to, a, uh, to transformer, AC to AC to lower AC, the rectifier transferred the AC, the lower AC to DC through a DC link or chopper. Then the inverter transferred the DC to three phase AC connected to the induction motor. And uh, onboard auxiliary supplies 415, uh, three volt phase, 50 Hertz, variable frequency. This is needed for an induction motor. This is what the invert, uh, inverter will do. If you look at the picture again, this is the same picture, but now the pantograph is connected to the transformer and the transformer is connected to the, uh, to the rectifier and the rectifier is connected to the inverter and the inverter is connected to the motors. But there is also another link for an, another inverter that, uh, that is using a, a, another transformer that can be used within 
the, the train itself. So DC to AC for auxiliary uh, usage within the train, transfer alternative current for using within the train. So this is how power electronics is used within the trains. Choppers is a DC to DC or what is known to be DC link. AC to AC are the transformers. You need to remember the key technical terms. Transformer, AC to AC, rectifier, AC to DC, chopper, DC to DC, inverter, DC to AC. And always remember 25,000 kV going to a transformer. The transformer transfer this to a um, uh, Rectif a, a lower uh, alternative uh, current than a rectifier. So the rectifier used the AC to transfer it to DC. Then the DC is passed to an inverter, which is converted to an AC or three phase AC that is passed to the induction motor or another inverter that is used to transfer the alternative current to auxiliary usage within the train. This is the same as this graph, anthograph circuit breaker going to the transformer from the transformer to the rectifier, from the rectifier to chopper or DC link, to the inverter, and from the inverter to the induction motor. This is and or, or you have a, 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 that uh, uh, rectifier to inverter, uh, sorry, uh, transformer to rectifier, and you are going to another inver uh, inverter for auxiliary usage within the train, which can be compressor, local cooling fans, battery, motor power and others. And auxiliary lect uh, rectifier, three phase AC motor. This is can be an additional uh, additional support. So, so I, I hope that this was clear. You need to know the main conversions that happens within the train and the main usage of these systems. Uh, I hope this was clear for you. We'll see you in the next lesson. We, uh, now we have understood the big picture of the traction system. We have understood that we have a, a power source, either a diesel engine, DC electrified railway line, AC electrified line, that is passing to a traction package that is doing several conversions, that is going either to AC motor, induction motor, or a DC motor. And we understood the structure of the motor, the structure of the DC motors, how it's excited. Also, we have talked a little bit about the power electronics and their role. And also we talked about the electrification system. I hope this is clear. We'll see you in the next, next uh, session and we'll be talking about a new lecture. Have a great evening.